Good morning, everyone. An initial welcome to those of you who are here, to the Zoom early birds, and to those of you who are watching on YouTube later. A key theme for us this year is worship. And now there's time to prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus in our service. So please, just listen along. Uh, and if you're at home, feel free to sing out. Um, and you may want to stand, you may want to dance, you may just want to close your eyes and submerge yourselves. But uh, here we go, and I shall be back at about 10.30 to start the service.
Well, another week and another. <laughs> oh, despite the interruption. Good morning to you all. Those of you in church, please take a seat. And those of you at home, please take a seat as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you all. My name is Bob. I'm a member of the church here and I shall be leading the service this morning. Uh, it's very odd standing here with, um, with about six people here in total, if, if that. And uh, uh, I, most of you are at home, some of you will be watching um, on video. But isn't it good to know that God is with us right now, unified in his family, wherever we may be? Isn't it good to be able to sing or to hum, if you like, uh, it is well with my soul? Um, we're in a privileged position that we know God and God knows us. God knows everyone, uh, but we're privileged to know God in that way. Uh, so hello to Joan, Heather, Evelyn and Marie and anyone else who's on the phone. Uh, hello to you good people at home Zooming in live from across the nation and to everyone here in church. And a big hello if you're catching up a bit later on in, on YouTube. Today is the second in our New Year series, looking at the Ten Commandments. Last week, Laura re reflected that there is but one God. And today we'll be hearing from Rosemary, looking at the command that we are not to have idols. I don't know how many of you were involved in last Monday's Day of Prayer and Sacrificial Fasting. Uh, to me, it was a really rewarding experience, and being part of a multi-church uh, action to bring COVID to an end. Laura will be continuing with that each Monday, and if any of you would like to join her in uh, a day of prayer and fasting each Monday, please let Laura know she would be very, very uh, welcome or very pleased to have others joining in as well with that. But let's recognize that we have now a momentum of prayer and worship. And we refresh that now by coming together and welcoming God into our presence here, wherever we are. Father God, we know you are with us here in this building and with the rest of your family at home or wherever they are. We welcome you. Let us just soak up your grace, soak up your love as we try to become more like you. Thank you for your promise never to let us walk through this life alone. Amen. One God, present with each of us forever, but we confess that we don't always recognize that. We have allowed something to come between us. We've distanced ourselves by our actions, by our own lack of trust. We've all done wrong in God's eyes. Some sins obvious to us, but there are other things that we're not even aware of ourselves. Prejudices that we might have, for example, that are hidden to us. And there are things we try to justify as to ourselves as we think, hmm, that's not really a sin, is it? We each have our own versions of what is good, and often that isn't the same as God's. So what is in our hearts? Do we put things above God in our lives? Do we try to mould God to fit our expectations, our aspirations, our own judgments? Do we put God off? Oh, yes, I will pray, uh, but I must just do something else first. So let's take a few moments to recall those things and offer to God the times that your behaviour and thoughts have fallen short, and then we'll turn back to God and say sorry. Let's just reflect on the things that we've done and the things that we haven't done.
We're sorry for the things we did and thought that were wrong. We are sorry for the things that have become a bad habit that we don't even notice. We are sorry for not doing things we know we should have done. Father God, we want to do better. We turn back to you. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's go to Uzor now for this morning's reading. And then after that, Rosemary will uh, bring God's word to life for us all. So, Uzor, are you there? Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This morning's reading is taken from Exodus chapter 32, from 1 to 10. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered round Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take up the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. Reading from the screen, and it's not showing the three, so I go back to my Bible. Okay. okay, here we are. So all the people took up their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol, cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterwards, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now, leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Rosemary, one of St. James's people, and it's a pleasure to be talking to you today. Let's pray before I start. Lord, be in my words as I speak them and in all our minds as we think about your word. Amen. Well, today we're looking at the second commandment where God says, you shall not make for yourself an idol. And our reading was from, uh, that is found in Exodus 20, and our reading today which Uzzah has read to us from Exodus 32. Uh, Uzzah read how Moses was up the mountain being given the Ten Commandments by God and at the bottom of the mountain, the Israelites were in their camp, busy breaking the commandment and indulging in worshipping a golden calf. Now, I think this scene is so remote from our modern world that it's hard to find uh, a point of identity with the Israelites First of all, it seems crazy that they would abandon the God of their fathers. And, and I ask, you know, what were they doing? Thinking of idols so early in their life of following 
Moses. God had brought them out of slavery in Egypt and he'd provided for them food and water in the wilderness. Why would they want to worship an idol? And as I look at verse one, I notice a couple of things. Firstly, they couldn't wait, couldn't wait for Moses to come back. And they expected the worst. They thought something had happened. It says, when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered round Aaron and said, come, make us gods who will go before us. They were fed up with waiting. And then they say, as for this fellow Moses, who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what's happened to him. They expected the worst. Moses had been gone too long and they thought something's up, something's happened to him. And here's where I think we can identify with the Israelites. This is like the story of life. Waiting is hard to do. When nothing's happening, when things don't go as we'd like, panic and frustration can kick in and we look for quick solutions. We look for something to alleviate the boredom. We know all about that now, waiting for the end of the pandemic so we can get on with our lives, we think, waiting for the vaccine so we're safer. And also, when we feel that no one is there for us, like the Israelites relying on Moses and he'd gone, on our own, we feel the insecurity of being out without someone who's there for us, someone we need. And for us, I think negative thinking can take over and we imagine the worst. So here I am on my own again. No one's really there for me. People always let me down. And so we spiral down into a bad place. And the Israelites quickly gathered round Aaron and asked him to come up with a solution. They couldn't wait. They couldn't wait for Moses. And see how quick Aaron was to give them what they wanted. They wanted a God and he came up with the golden calf. I don't know who to blame more, Aaron or the Israelites. But they played their part in giving him the gold as well. So what do we turn to when we're fed up? When we feel uh, overlooked or neglected? No one's there for us. It happens to us all, I'm sure. But the first port of call in my experience might be a glass of wine, a slice of cake, more wine, more cake. Or it might make us feel bitter and take it out on someone else. There's usually some form of other indulgence or control where we're trying to help ourselves because we're fed up. Well, now back to the Israelites, let's turn to God's reaction. We read how angry he was. Why, I asked, was he so angry about this? Why was this commandment so important to him that they should have no idols? Why did his anger burn against his people, it said? Well, obviously they disobeyed his commandment, but his commandments are wise. I think that's the thing. They disobeyed God's wisdom. His commandments were given out of love and wisdom, and disobeying that is like turning their backs on him, denying him. And God was angry because he knew where idolatry leads. It just doesn't stay like it starts, it escalates. Any substitute for God is deadly. They thought they could make a substitute for God but his anger was because he knew that it could lead to the worst thing. It could lead to human sacrifice. And it did. In the Old Testament, we read of the kings Manasseh and Ahaz sacrificing. Manasseh even sacrificed his own children. No wonder God was angry about idolatry. And there's another reason why he's angry. I listened to a series by J. John on the Ten Commandments, and he says that breaking the second commandment is like this. Imagine he had a photo of another woman in his wallet, 
and his wife found the photo. How would she feel knowing he had a photo of another woman in his wallet? Well, she'd be jealous and she'd be angry and she would probably tear up the photo. And Jay John says she's entitled to feel like that because he'd made a promise to love her. God doesn't want any rivals for our affection. And now, by the way, the rest of this chapter is very interesting. Um, and it's about how Moses intercedes for the Israelites. He speaks up on their behalf to try and get God to lessen his anger towards them and punish them less. It's an interesting chapter, but it's definitely another sermon for another time. Now, what does this commandment mean for us? Do we have an equivalent for the photo in the wallet? Something we turn to rather than turning to God. I think we need to be careful about what we worship. Things or people can become the centre of our attention and we focus on them so much that they have the potential. We cannot make anything a substitute for God. So easy to forget to put him first and let other things come in. We probably don't have actual idols in our houses. Um, but superstition is a form of idolatry. Some people touch wood, are afraid to break a glass. Avoid number 13. When we're superstitious, we're acknowledging that there's a power at work, a power other than God. And the same is true of horoscopes. There's an influence at work there, and it isn't God's influence. And it could be dangerous. You know, Islam does not allow any representation of living things in the mosques. No paintings or statues. All their art is calligraphy. They are so determined that there is only one God and only he should be worshipped. And by contrast, some Christian churches are full of statues. And this appeals to some Christians and not to others. And I don't think it's my place to condemn either way. And not my, not my preference, but for all of us, we worship a living God and we know him in our hearts. It's a spiritual thing. And we, we don't want to be putting our trust in anything that's made of stone or wood or metal or crystal. And there's another form of idolatry, the idol of self-importance. When we take ourselves too seriously and begin to think we're rather important or special, uh, when we focus too much on, on the work we do, on the role we play, I think even in doing Christian work, and it was pointed out to me that it is a form of idolatry. All that we do is for God. The work is his, and it's not about us. Think about it. The Israelite idolatry was on a massive scale. What they did was huge. There was no hiding it. But Aaron doesn't accept responsibility for his part. He says in verse 24, they gave me the gold, I threw it in the fire, and out came this calf. It's almost comical. But let's take responsibility for what we do. Be aware of the things we turn to and own up to them. Own up to God. And wonderfully, elsewhere in the Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 11, God actually tells us how to do it. He says, now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It's not in heaven or beyond the sea. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. See, I have set before you life. If you love the Lord your God and refuse to worship other gods, I have set before you life or death. Now choose life. It all happens inside us in the context of our everyday thinking, in our hearts 
and in our mouths and the choices we make. The word God says is very near. He himself by his spirit is at work in us as we let him align us with himself. However, there are distractions as I've mentioned, which look like they'll make us happy and cheer us up, help us over difficult times, but they are actually distracting us from finding our true fulfillment in God. God's great desire is that we should choose life. Now, during this pandemic, uh, I've been using the app that Laura recommended for daily prayer. And it has the confession in it several times a day. Every time you open it, you've got to confess. And after a few weeks, I got fed up with confessing all the time. And it was I going to sin that many times, you know, between lunch and tea time. Then I realized it was a safeguard to help me choose life and keep in relationship with the Lord. God's relationship with us is it's not just important to us, it's important to him. For he chose us. He chose us before the foundation of the earth. Way back in time, he planned for our relationship with him. We are important to him, precious and loved. He made us his children at such a high cost to himself, the sacrifice of his dear son. He doesn't want anything to come in and spoil our relationship with him. Let's pray. Lord, we acknowledge our weakness, our tendency to put other things before you, and we ask your forgiveness. And we ask that you would fill us with your spirit, that we may know your word of life to us in our hearts and follow your ways and love you. Amen. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, what wonderful words, what, what words, what, what a, a wonderful look around this, this whole issue, this problem of uh, idolatry. Um, should we just pause for a moment and absorb what we've, what we've heard? Um, Heavenly Father, may those words remain with us as we move on. May we remember that you are the only true God as we go about our lives in the days to come. Amen. Did you notice there Rosemary referring to Aaron and um, blaming the others for the gold? And that immediately reminded me of the Bible study that we did during the week and uh, where we were looking at Genesis and the, and the fall, where man immediately turned around to God and said, ah, it was that woman that you put here and immediately blaming someone else. Gosh, what, what a chord that struck with me. Uh, we come now to our time of prayer, and uh, with, with good fortune, we're going to go across to Alice to lead us in our intercessions now. Alice. Yes, pray to you all, and a very good morning. I'm going to start our prayers with Psalm 121, because talking about idols now, we have to know where we lift up our eyes to. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from hence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Let us worship God. Let us kneel before, before the throne of grace where there is mercy. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and his sheep of his hand. O oh Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our King, 
You have asked us to ask and we shall receive, to knock, assuring us that if we ask, we shall be given unto us. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, it shall be opened unto us. Help us to believe all these words that you have written long ago. Give us the faith to seek, believing that we shall surely find. Give us the faith and persistence to knock that she shall be open unto us. Help us, dear Lord, to show the fruit of your spirit in our life today. Your love, your joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness, your gentleness, eternal Father. You made the whole world to stop sinning during this time of crisis. And you silence the noise, the noise that we have created. You have made us to bend our knees again and ask for mercy. Be merciful to all your people, Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, to know you is to love you. And to love you is to know you. Send your Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds. Touch our hearts so that we may know and love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray at this difficult time for the NHS, all the people working there. Lord, we bring all the people working in NHS, those who are helping with this pandemic. We pray for the people who lost their loved ones, as well as those who are still in ICU. Heavenly Father, we pray that your evening power we heal all the sick people and those who are still having complications after the coming out of hospital be resuscitated and brought to life. With all those in hospital, in nursing home, in, with other things, Father, may your healing hands rest upon them and restore them to health. And we pray for all those who help to heal the sick and prevent disease and pain. Father, strengthen them in body, mind, and spirit. Bless their work that they may give comfort to all. We pray for those who work to produce the vaccine. And we pray for all those who are helping to implement the program. Be with them, Lord. Help them to have the strength to continue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the troubled area of the world. There is war in Yemen, Afghanistan, earthquake in Russia, Indonesia, the American election result causing problem. Grant all that peace which comes from the world cannot give us. We ask for help for all these nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us remember our church in prayer. Almighty God, send your spirit on all who lives in worship and feed us with God's words. We pray for those who contact people and all those who are helping the youth in the church. Help us all to do our share in the church and community. We pray for our congregation to love one another with Christ-like humility, willing to help build church of God. We pray that our church will be one that always rejoices in the truth of the gospel and be faithful in speaking and applying God's word to the life of all those around us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, the government is in a lot of problems of having to deal with all the problems that we have right now. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we call on you to give wisdom to our government and all ministers. We pray that they will have energy to work together for the good of all our people. We pray that they will listen to science and help them to find long-term solution to the economy and this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, if there's anything you want to ask God for, you can take a moment now to ask, believing that you will receive.
Finally, God, we praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for life. We pray for our families and all the other peoples who are dear to us. We commit the coming week into your hands, Father. We pray that you will protect us and keep us from any danger. We pray that you will help us to love you as you love us. Do not let us be separated from you. Father, the health needs you. Every man needs you. Father, come back to walk through the streets of this world. Come back to live among your people. Come back to guide the nations. Come back to bring peace with justice. Come back to bring the fire of your love so that we can become new creatures. In Jesus' name, amen. And together, shall we say the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as he forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is thy kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alice. And now it's time for those of you at home to exercise your singing voices as we cross over to Peter and Paul to hear about the birthdays. Well, another week and another Peter's Zoom room. This week we have been blessed as a nation. We held our St James Prayer Day. And what a wonderful thing it is to see so many people engaged in prayer. It was amazing to hear our little prayer day had spread even as far as Japan. There is power in prayer, so let's keep it up. An update for Kids Church. We are also looking at different ways to pray. We have looked at using a prayer tree. This week we are looking at having a prayer jar, jar which we can leave next to our bed. But my favourite so far was our loud prayer. Yes, that's right, our loud prayer. We went where we shouted out together as a group. Things like hope, peace, love, joy. Yes, that's what we learned at Advent time as well. Now, it's the main reason for my Zoom room. Yes, that's right, it's birthdays. This week's birthday is for Samantha Gentle. So let's sing. Happy birthday today. May God bless you, we pray. Live for Jesus, dear Samantha. Happy birthday to you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Paul, and happy birthday, Samantha, for this week. So we come to a time of notices, and first, if we can establish this link, uh, we're going to cross to Birmingham for some breaking news. So let, let's see if we can we can manage this over the miles. Emily, how nice to see you. Hello. Hello. Morning, and Andrew. <laughs> it's a drama here. How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing really well. We're really good, I yeah. think. Yes. Excellent. So, so somebody said there's some breaking news. There is. There's a little bit of news. Very small bit of news. A very, very, very little. small very bit little. of news. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, look. That's, <laughs> that's the little bit of news. Very little. Amazing. Oh, well done. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, round, round of applause. Round of applause, everyone. Oh, that's splendid news. Uh, when, what, 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 when's the sort of due date? The baby is due on the 20, 24th of July. 24th of July, a summer, a summer baby. How yeah. lovely, how lovely. And, and how are you? Are you okay? Yeah. Um, thankfully, the first trimester is nearly over now, so most of the nausea is wearing off and we're starting to just enjoy things, but we're getting there, yeah. I think, um, yeah, physically, Emily's doing a lot better. I think there's still, everything's fine, everything's good, but I think we still have a bit of a tendency to worry. So, 
I thought you were going to say Emily's fine, but it's you, Andrew, that's not feeling so good. But uh... yeah, Emily's fine, but I'm just feeling tired and nauseous now. I don't know what it is. <laughs> those, those days are to come. <laughs> may, may, we, may we pray for you? Please. Yes, Perhaps at home you'd like just to hold out a, hold out a hand to um, Emily and to Andrew. I suggest you do it to the screen. Don't, don't try and go to Birmingham because you might, you might face the wrong way if your geography is not too good and, and miss them all together. So let, let's just, let's just uh, pray for a moment. Lord, we, we commend to you these lovely parents in waiting. Uh, we, we pray for safe uh, progress, for safe development, for good health for Emily and for the baby. We pray for Emily and Andrew as they prepare the family home and for the big changes coming in their lives. And in due course, Lord, for a good Christian upbringing for their new child. And so, Lord, we, we just commend to you this, this couple and, uh, and this, this growing family, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, well done. <laughs> Lovely. M moving on. Um, in a moment, in a moment, we're going to try and cross to Martine. Uh, so, Martine... An early warning, just put the iron down safely somewhere it won't set light to something. Uh, but first of all, let's just talk about giving to the church. And uh, in a moment, we'll, we'll put the, the text number up there. Um, but I'd really like to thank everyone who plays by standing order uh, and in other regular ways for, to, for the vital service that the, the church does here. Um, it really does give remarkable value to money when you think small amounts of money goes such a long way in bringing God's word into the community and growing our own faith, and that, that's fantastic. Uh, if you don't give regularly already, you might want to prayerfully consider what God is asking you to do. In the meantime, why not donate something right now? Uh, and we will have in a moment the number up there. Uh, just so to donate right now or at any time, we have complete flexibility Text St. James in capital letters, one word, St. James, space, and the figure for the amount you want to donate in pounds. That could be any number from 1 to 20. So that's St. James, St. James, space, and a number. Make it a big number. Big number. If you don't want to receive marketing information, you can text it to St. James No Info, and then the amount but we promise not to plague you with um, all sorts of spam anyway. We just don't do that here. So you're invited to do that right now, um, but of course you can do so, as I say, at any time. And you can also give by bank transfer, and the details are on the website and the regular mailings that Bryony sends out. So please consider uh, that. Now, Martine, how's the ironing? Is Martine there? Uh, yeah, it's it's a very slow process today, I'm afraid. Uh, we've I had to take Keisha, and then I had no internet, and uh, yeah, very slow process. Let's say I'm here now, which is all good. <laughs> uh, well, hi, um, St James's family. Um, just so you can a quick update on food bank. Um, obviously, we are an essential service, so we are still open, and people are still using us quite a lot. Um, so if you are able to donate that this week, it'd be great. I know it's I saw a few of you the other day. Uh, yesterday when I was at the food bank um, but it still continues to be milk even though we're starting to build up our supply again but it's still UHT milk um, small jars of coffee rice pudding um, and custard or anything that you can give to us that um, is non-perishable we will always take and we will always be using so thanks ever so much for your support that's great thanks Martine and thank you to everyone who uh, supports the food bank so very well um, in, in goods and uh, in some cases in, in cash and always consider that if you can't get to the shops or, or can't get uh, something there. Uh, moving on now, we have uh, the prayer project, project to think about uh, and this week uh, Jenny has selected a number of, of, of places. Um, I just want to encourage you to follow this. I don't know how many of you actually do this but uh, each week we pray for a particular road or a, a set of smaller roads. Um, it's a wonderful way to get to know the parish. It's a wonderful way to reflect on the people who live there, um, their problems, their joys, their families, their work and so on. Um, on businesses, on, on traffic, on cars going by. Um, 
on perhaps housing associations, on tradespeople, refuse collectors and postmen, people who serve those roads. Um, and it's, I, I personally find it quite uplifting. Um, it's also a pretty good way to get to know the district if you don't already know it so well. So, make a note, this week we have a list of different streets you can choose from, or why not get to them all. There is Mariner's Close, Clarence Close, Crescent Rise, Brook Hill Road, and in Brook Hill Road, why not think about Aldi and the staff and their customers and the people who deliver to them as well. Actually, Aldi's just over the boundary in St Mary's Parish, but don't let that worry you. St Mary's will not mind you praying for a shop in their parish. So once again, that's Mariner's Close, Clarence Close, Crescent Rise, Brook Hill Road, and Aldi. And if any of those you don't know, why not Google it and go and take a look and walk around there and see. Also coming up this week, we've got three types of events. Uh, we've got Morning Prayer Live on Facebook. That is both Monday and Wednesday at 8.30 a.m., just for a quarter of an hour or so. Um, that's uh, always, always worth a, a, just a live refresh and um, gets us ready for the day. On Thursday evening, there is the second uh, session of our Bible study, and that's Thursday the 21st of January. Please let Laura know if you want to be included. Um, and Laura, if, if somebody was already included this week gone, are you happy that they don't need to contact you again? Yeah, that, that's that's fine. So if if you were if you were if you participated in the um, Bible study this week, that's fine. Uh, perhaps if you can't make it, just let Laura know. Um, but if you'd like to come along and you you didn't do that, it's absolutely fine. Each week is a separate subject. Uh, this time is wrestling God, which sounds a really interesting uh, thing to do. Um, just let Laura know, and you can uh, you'll be very very welcome to join in. Uh, if you can manage Zoom. And then, of course, on uh, next Sunday, there's the 1015 service, as ever. Um, you understand, I know, that because of the current regulations, uh, it's only uh, a very small number of people who can, be, uh, who can actually come along here, either if you're involved directly in running the service or if you can't get Zoom for whatever reason and you need, you feel the need to come in. And in that case, um, just make sure that Laura is aware that, that you can come in because numbers really do have to be very uh, restricted. And just a bit of advance warning, <clears throat> there is a quiz night coming up on Saturday the 6th of February, quite early in the evening. So uh, uh, there's time to see the football results and then um, come along to, uh, to, to the quiz night. So it's the 6th of February, details to follow, but put the, the date in your diary uh, in the meantime. I know you're not doing anything else that evening. Um, and why not sign up to Facebook if you can and to YouTube, uh, the YouTube page to find all the services and reflections that, we, uh, that, that are available. And you can go right back through history and look at those in the, uh, in the past. And finally, the Winter Photo Quest. Just a reminder that David Mulford is after your pictures of the winter. Now, we just had a little dusting of snow the other morning, didn't we? Um, but uh, just, just think about that. Think about as you're going out for your, your exercise, your walks, um, just grab a picture of something that means winter to you. We haven't yet had decent snow. I wonder if we will. Who knows? More details, um, but... but feel free to um, uh, send those pictures in to David uh, as and when you, you get them. So we're coming close to an end to our service. Uh, what have we learned today? <clears throat> it's interesting that even though Israel had seen the works of the Lord, they still wanted their own images that they could shape and worship. Do we bend the word of the Lord to follow what's apparently socially acceptable to society? We know that fake news is all around us. What about fake gods? And don't forget, it's not things like Buddhas and, and little statues and multiple gods. We know, we, we know we're not like that. 
But we're not careful about things in, uh, the things in life that can become idols, the things that can drive us, the things that can be worshipped. Money, maybe, or cars, our careers, a football club or managers. All of these things um, can impact us. All of these things can become idols if we're not careful. So in conclusion, let's just look at the concluding remarks from John's first letter to the believers everywhere. 1 John 5. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true even in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, concludes John, dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen to that. So we're just about to uh, finish now and go into our breakout groups. Three questions occur to me from uh, the things that uh, Rosemary was, was, uh, was saying and, and reflecting on that. First of all, what do you do, what do you turn to when the going gets a bit rough? Is it too easy to get that bottle of wine out? Secondly, what drives you to get up in the morning? What motivates you? What are you looking forward to? And thirdly, what's in your wallet? If you've only just joined us and you didn't see Rosemary's, um, uh, sermon, then you might like to listen to it before you think about the what's in your wallet question. There was something significant in there. And so as we finish now, shall we just pray? May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. So it's time for me to say farewell to those of you on Zoom. Uh, Enjoy the breakout rooms. Uh, Have a chat around those questions or just have a chat and pretend that you were at the back of church here over, over a coffee. And I look forward to being with you all next week. Bye.